Hey everyone, it's Natalie. Just a small reminder to all the men I've tolerated before is on its holiday break. So for the duration of the holiday season, we will be hosting the audio version of our spinoff series, Still Comfy. Still Comfy is a collaboration with Jules Washington from Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous to talk about our favorite comfort movies and shows and how we feel about them now. These recordings are just a small sampling of the movies we've covered. You will have to follow us on Instagram and YouTube if you want to join in on the fun live and see Still Comfy in its true visual form. Happy holidays and we'll see you with new content in 2023. In the meantime, enjoy this recording catch up on old episodes, consider becoming a Patreon member, and shop the merch store. Is oh, we are live. Oh, here now. we go. <laughs> We're live. Ba-da-da-da-da-da. We had connection issues. <laughs> and then we didn't know that the internet had come back in. Now we're live for the show. Ba. There. I Hello, friends. <laughs> Hello. We are here, still comfy and exciting news. I'm Julia Washington. I'm your host of Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous. I am here with. I'm Natalie Katona. I'm the host of Tall the Men I've Tolerated Before. Your everyday look at mm-mm, mm-mm, your once a week look there at go. everyday misogyny. <laughs> I talk about it. misogyny every day, though, if you want to DM, call, it's true. join the Patreon, yeah. any of it. <laughs> and we have a special guest this week. Our special guest is Mario Mello. And I will let him introduce himself. But I need you all to know that he is a pop culture makes me jealous alum. Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Thank you guys. I'm Mario Mello from Movies with Mr. Mario, where I do movie reviews and send out all the up and upcoming news regarding movies, celebrities, and all that entertainment stuff. So thank you for having me here. We're excited Thanks you're here, Mario. Here. We are gathered here today to discuss Olivia Wilde's Don't Worry Darling, which released Friday. September 22nd? 23rd. Well, Thursday no, the 22nd. The, oh, Thursday. Thursday. Friday, September yeah. 23rd. Yes. Starring yeah. Harry Styles mm-hmm. and Florence Pugh. With some visitations from Chris Pine, Gemma Chan, Nick Kroll. I don't know why anybody isn't talking about what Nick Kroll being in this movie. And mm-hmm. other people. Olivia so, Wilde herself. Olivia Wilde herself is Bunny, which I loved. Secondly, my first question is, <laughs> at which point did you know that Gemma Chan was going to save the day? I No, I'm confused so, by that. I am too. <laughs> really? I had a lot of questions. They, they didn't, they didn't questions. give us enough context about Gemma. I need I a did. whole prequel about G- Gemma. At dinner, when okay. she went hard for her husband, I was like, oh, she's going to do something to him. Yeah. And she's going to be why Flo gets out. <laughs> so we need to warn everybody there is lots of spoilers right now. Oh, oh thank yeah. you, Mario. I made a and I in the caption. This is not a spoiler free. This is a no. s- not a spoiler free show. Pop culture makes me jealous. We do spoilers. So that is the vibe we're bringing tonight. Thank you, Mario, for reminding me. He's been so on the show enough it, to know. If you haven't watched it. Come back and watch the replay. Right. Yes. I I told the whole internet that I was spoiling the fuck out of this movie because I would not be contained. <laughs> we will not be contained, damn it. Okay, so I will not fine. be censored. First, okay. first new question. Tell me what you thought about the movie because cr- critics hate it. Wait, are we going back because to the critics are men? <laughs> no, um, I read one. Oh, no. no, actually, the female critic I read from the New York Times wasn't a critic anymore. And she mm-hmm. said that her 14-year-old daughter loved it. Some women are misogynist in disguise. Yes. Um, so I had two leaving thoughts um, on my list for Don't Worry, Darling. The mm-hmm. first one was, have you ever watched a movie where it affirmed everything that you knew you knew in your gut and then built an entire brand and a podcast out of? 
And then my second thought was when my sister asked me how the movie was, I said, this will be a movie that men will tell us is bad for years to come because it will make them very, very fragile to watch it. Mario, what were your thoughts? Um, when I first, when I walked out, I was like, dang, what did I just watch? It's one of those ones that's like, did that really happen? <laughs> and then at driving home, I, you know, you know, I, uh, decompress and think mm-hmm. about it as I drive home and by the time I got home I was like dang I really enjoyed it a lot yeah. a yeah. lot um overall I I loved it I, that soundtrack slapped the sound the opening song you cannot go wrong with Ray Charles you can't oh, ever go wrong my with god Ray Charles. if you want to set the stage for a mid-century film he is the guy to do it Mm-hmm. You've got Palm Springs vibes in this fucking Victory Town, whatever the hell it's called. You've got all this beautiful mid-century architecture. You've got cars from the 40s, the 50s, the 60s. I was like, what is this golden heaven? It's going to be hell. It's going to be of course. hell. It was too perfect. <laughs> it was too perfect. <laughs> Who says goodbye to their husband in just a button down white t-shirt a brainwashed woman yeah i have to i have a lot to say about the way that alice was clearly reprogrammed for Uh the victory project compared to the way the other wives were reprogrammed for the victory project yeah you know it got me thinking because i mean obviously we're going to talk about this out of order But when you kind of realize that, you know, program, like when you get the confirmation that programming is happening Mm -hmm. and who Alice was prior to. Right. And then it made me wonder what were the other women like before? Because with Alice, you get the vibe that she is the smartest one in the group out of all those women. Mm -hmm. Not that I'm saying. Go ahead. What was what was the uh, um the first lady's name that jumped off the roof? Megan, Margaret, Margaret, Margaret. I knew it was an M, um, because she found out about it first. So I was like, well, maybe she was a rocket science. And isn't it always black women always who women. shed the light on really? the trash that's happening first? Mm-hmm. I was like, of course, of course, because y'all, none of y'all are gonna listen to a black woman. Of course, Mm-mm. she's right. <laughs> Sorry. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. I took it as the horror movie where the black person always dies first. Right. And yeah. so I was like, oh. Yeah. Because it was a horror movie. I <laughs> love was. psychological thrillers. Same. Like, fuck me up with a psychological thriller. Yeah. Yeah. I grew up on psychological thrillers. So I think I what I was telling Natalie, Mario, after I saw it on Saturday, I was like, I it's so like when people gasped at certain parts of the film, I had these moments of like, how did you not know that was coming? Have you never seen a psychological thriller before? I'm pretty sure the answer is yes. <laughs> I'm truly like, I really think that it is a genre that's fallen by the wayside because it hasn't been very popular since like, remember when we had that entire year where every book was called like woman on a train gone yeah. woman yeah gone girl woman in distress yeah <laughs> also we just want to remind everybody if you are watching live because we are using a third party we can't see your con we can't don't know you're it. here unless you don't comment. Know so go ahead and give us some comments in there tell us it- tell and us if all you're the things. watching the replay i would like to know what do you think the moral of this movie was supposed to be what was olivia wilde trying to teach us i have two <laughs> so i gotta say i kind of saw the incoming but i didn't see the whole ending coming okay i was i was still pretty shocked what it actually was yeah I, 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 I did figure out i mean i figured there was some time of brainwashing like stepford wives it was a total yeah. stepford wives movie or it was um, like but, the village where they were yeah in, that's what i was yeah. thinking it or was like Annabellum. it had a Annabellum yes. vibe yeah yes so it's like they're secretly you know put in there mm-hmm. thinking it's the 50 but then so then when we see her as a surgeon i was like okay i was right uh-huh. but then to see that she's still there in bed in this vr 
mm-hmm. set up and you're like clockwork orange type vibe yeah. right there. And I'm just like, oh man, I did not see that coming. And then. <laughs> so I, I did see it coming. So the first flash we get from her and she's like, what the shit was that? I was like, okay, we're not in reality. Something's mm-hmm. going on. Mm-hmm. There's, and then everything that, you know, they created the eye shape all the time. And it was multiple times. It's like, okay, so then it has something to do with the eyes. So I, so then I'm like, okay, but don't figure it out, Julia, because you want to enjoy the movie. And now, (laughs) and now that I'm thinking about it, like every time they had eye imagery, it was like Mm -hmm. slowly rotating. I'm like, yes, the buffer symbol. Yes. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Natalie, like the buffer symbol. Well, and that's the images that they're seeing in the tent that they're in, which I thought was really smart that, you know, she's having those flashes. I was like, good. That was a good touch, I thought. Mm -hmm. Um, And then when there was another point, too, where I was like, oh, this is, shoot, now I can't remember where my other thought but yeah i think it's i think it's i think it was a really well done movie it was, it was really and I'm well done i really think irritated are, that the critics are like dragging it so hard i think people are haters and i think that people don't like the moral of the story which is and i quote let me get out my notes <laughs> hey kids Husbands are dangerous, <laughs> even the ones that look like Harry Styles. <laughs> and then when they said, I'll do anything to make you happy, it means I'll do anything to make me feel less inadequate. Men. <laughs> I mean, if you look back, though, at the other like the other Stepford Wives, like the Nicole Kidman one, and then the one mm-hmm. way back when the they didn't get good. They didn't get good reviews either. No, so I think no. it's that whole storyline. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree well, with you. Do not like <laughs> movies where women are honest in an art form about their own oppression, mm-hmm. Actually, especially when white women do it. Yeah, the New York Times had a really good article about that, and I'm going to share it in the comments for people to read if they want to but the author basically says that you know i'm pretty sure it's the new york times um that you know olivia wilde is basically getting into this um what is it called shoot it's a really long article um m-a-u-d-i-t is what it's called Mm -hmm. um i want to say it's modit and I'm just assuming because I've never heard it. I've only seen it written. Um, but basically what it means is that it's movies rendered marginal by disrepute. And a lot of female-led films, director, female movies directed by women, tend to fall, get this label. And this author's arguing it's unfairly getting this label. Of course. Of course. Because, because even people hated Book Smart, and she comments on, you know, I, a lot of the reviews I read were like, Book Smart was so much better, and Olivia Wilde, and what is she doing? And I was like, Y'all hated it. Yeah, like nobody Y'all enjoyed were haters. Book Smart when it first I came out, except for me and my kid. We left the, the theater like, That was the greatest movie we've seen all year. <laughs> and now that I've seen the movie, I do really understand why Florence Pugh was so pissed off that all anyone could talk about was Harry Styles was going to go down on her. Yeah. She's like, There's a lot to this movie. Yeah. It's going to be a lot. And it's not just going to be Harry banging me backwards on a table. Like, and every review I read today pulled in the drama. Mm-hmm. They, every single one referenced the drama that was surrounding the film, and it, and there, which I think moves them away from what the film is actually about. So there have been allegations that the drama was fabricated so that the movie would have a great opening weekend. I which mean, they, honestly, white men do that all the time. They did have a great opening weekend. They were number one. Yeah, people pay people to go to their movies. People buy enough books to where their book ends up on the New York uh, bestsellers list. Like, everything is a scam, people. I can't help it that you're not in on the game. Um, So I felt really sad that we're still at a place in our society where Olivia Wilde couldn't feel comfortable making a kind of cutting edge, not marvel movie um with no vampires or thor or anything 
and have to like rely on let's start some petty rumors so people come you down harry and harry's like yeah i'll pretend to spit on chris yeah yeah <laughs> but i think chris and flo weren't down and that's why they removed themselves from the drama <laughs> well you know when you think about chris pine's um body of work too like he doesn't really play into the paparazzi and if they do find him he's very much like here's the books i just bought <laughs> support support writers right like he's not he's not like some of these other celebs who are like eating it up and i don't know it's interesting mario i'd love to hear your thoughts on the movie structure and everything because you do have a lot of movie you i mean you and natalie both are more I've moved away from horror films because I can't do like when they get gory, I can't hang. But like this kind of psychological thriller, I can do all day, every day. But also my knowledge base on films like this are from like 50 years ago because that's what I grew up on with my folks. So anything modern, like hated the village. I had it figured out like that. And I was so irritated that everybody thought it was brilliant. Same with, well, Sixth Sense was pretty good. But anyway, go ahead. Um, I yes, I think it was a very good. Like I said, I I kind of saw it coming. I think because I've seen so many movies, mm -hmm. I saw most of it coming. But I think that's why I enjoyed it so much because I still was surprised. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a lot of people in my audience did gasp a lot. They're like, <gasps> and then just to see like Harry Styles as kind of the bad guy, that's like right. on the outside world, mm -hmm. like even mm -hmm. more than he was in the inside, like the virtual world. I think got people um, and like a mediocre bad guy at that. Like yes. what was his greatest flaw? His greatest <laughs> flaw was that he was insecure. Yeah. He couldn't keep a job. He couldn't keep a wife stuff. and he couldn't keep a job. <laughs> so yeah. it was funny because during the, his like little monologue at the end where he's like telling her like why he did this and stuff like, and he's supposed to be like, this big old monologue for him. Yeah, like exactly. everyone in the audience was laughing about it. Like they were just like, oh my gosh, like they can't take him seriously. Like, oh, oh my gosh. The <laughs> it big... was really funny because I was just like, okay. <laughs> oh, well, the gaslighting, the quintessential yeah. gaslighting moment where it's like, I did it for you. I did it because yeah. you weren't dancing anymore. <laughs> and then I reprogrammed you to be distracted by your entire environment if I gave you an orgasm. Okay. And that was for you. It's for yeah. you. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I mean, I I think it I, I I've seen several male reviewers on like Twitter and stuff that actually did praise it and they say, you know, don't believe the majority of the critics. So well, I mean I, I, I do that's think good. there are um men out there that see both sides. Um so I don't think not everyone is misogynistic i feel no don't get me wrong there are still tons and we still have a lot of work to do but at least out of the reviews i was reading i did see several men defending the movie um, especially you know, especially like you know supporting florence pew and mm -hmm. just saying like i'm glad she stayed out of the drama and stuff like that like her you know, she's performance is flawless well i was like give this girl her oscar why yeah. didn't they release this in december so it'd be fresh on everyone's mind so she'd get nominated for an academy award for best actress because her performance was so good down yeah. to her pinky toe yes and then, like <laughs> i i read a petty review where someone was like well, Florence's performance came off manic and like over the top in comparison what? to others. I was like, you could have rewritten that entire whole sentence to go, Harry Styles couldn't act. And therefore, it was really jarring to watch Florence be a pro. Yeah, yeah. you know, and it was hard sometimes with some scenes with Harry because he did sound a little bit like he was reading off a script. Bless his heart. Um. And I think the only scene that he did do, I thought he delivered well, which makes me sad for your audience, Mario, because the scene that I thought he did deliver well when he, was when he was like, I did this all for I you. Know. I was like, finally, you figured it out. <laughs> you figured yeah. out where the acting chops are. Good job, son. <laughs> well, and honestly, I don't think Harry's character was actually supposed to be at any point of the movie 
the center focus of the story. Like you no. could have right. swapped him out with anyone. Right. And anyone do... could have done the part and anyone yeah. could have played the bumbling husband. Who... I agree. I'm also going to add, I do think you need a very like attractive yes. bordering on pretty man. Like I can't see Shia LaBeouf in this film just because I think he has a weaker jawline, you know, like he's not a bad looking dude, but the polished mid-century 60s man, I don't see that look on him. However, I will say we need to go outside of the Florence Pew of the Alice and Harry Styles home and look at the other husbands besides yeah. Chris Pine, because yeah. I was like, of course, Nick Kroll couldn't pull Olivia Wilde unless it was the Sims. Like. <laughs> And then, like, there was a, and oh my gosh, did you guys watch um, Big Love on HBO when it was no. popular? Oh mm -hmm. my God. So the really skinny kid who has the the newest couple. Yeah, Violet the, and Yeah, the male Ted? part of that couple, he was the oldest son in Big Love, and he was just as dorky and lanky and, like, cringy as that kid who was like, I really thought I'd get to talk. <laughs> to kyle today and i was like "Ooh, he hasn't grown at all good for him <laughs> so i almost thought that like because when they went to like basement harry styles where he was like greasy and listening yeah. to an andrew tate podcast i was like oh <laughs> it could have been shia labeouf because shia labeouf is creepy He's yeah creepy. like he could do the outside world version yeah, and um, then they yeah. clean him up for the simulation. Yeah. Because that was very I still part of it, too. Yeah, but I still can't see it. I still can't see it. Because, again, I'm going back to the jawline. Like, I don't think Shia LaBeouf has the strong, like, you know, Disney Prince jawline that the character of, what's his name? Harry Styles' character's name? I don't know what his name Jack. Is. Jack, thank yeah. you. Even though Jack is like a super basic character, super, you know, all these things, like he's still, there's still something about Jack and Alice being the most beautiful couple next to Everyone Chris else. Pine and Gemma. Mm -hmm. And I think that's, I, I call me superficial, but I think that's actually a really important nuance for the film. Mm. Because Olivia yeah. Wilde's gorgeous, right? But also she's married to Nick Kroll. And then you have the gal from A League of Their Own. Mm -hmm. Like, who's even her husband? I don't even remember. It's an it's a completely forgettable man. Yeah. Like which one? The pregnant lady? Yeah. She was the he she had the um Indian yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. It was now like, it was like which, yeah, which is which is funny because he's also in WandaVision, who's also stuck in a virtual in a, reality yeah. world. Which is oh, kind of funny. That is funny. <laughs> Sir, you're being typecast. <laughs> yeah. I. Um, can we talk about like how Chris Pine started his whole cult through a podcast? Like he was Joe Rogan. I was like, look at Harry Styles. It's 3 a.m. He's clicking another episode. He's like, yeah, Joe, tell him, tell him what the downfall of America was. It was that they could get abortions and jobs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Or like Andrew Day on TikTok, he's another asshole who women are always like, why does this guy have a microphone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, the guy that plays the doctor. Oh, yeah. Oh, is, uh, Timothy Sim. Sim he's one of my favorite Sims. character actors because he he's commits. on Veep. Yeah. He's the dorky guy. So when he mm -hmm. walks in, I was like, this guy's going to be a creep. I've never seen this guy be anything but a creeper. Whether it's a dorky creeper or a predatory mm -hmm. creeper. <laughs> yeah. Or like, how shocking was it to be a woman living in 2022 and watching like Chris Pine and Harry Styles lead a room full of men being like, this is our world. Whose world? Our world. And okay, I'm like, did oh. you, but after, that, after that whole dance song and like when he forces Harry to come up on stage and, and like dance like a monkey. Yeah, dance like, monkey. Dance. 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 Like you might as well have been shooting guns at his feet to make him dance. And then just how like I thought Harry again, I thought he did a really good job because he delivers performances better when there's no lines for uh -huh. him. I thought he did a really good job of like having panic in his eyes uh -huh. while still like, I got to do it. I got to do it. This is part of the game. This is part of the game. And like his face was so perfectly 
acted in that scene because you feel his panic, but you also feel like I got to keep it up because I don't want to lose it. And like at that point, I was like, oh, he's fully committed to whatever this is. It's yeah. signed, sealed and delivered. And whatever Flo has to say is going to be a lie so mm-hmm. he can get a pay raise or, you know, he gets to suck Chris Pine's dick on Fridays or whatever the perks were because They had the men had to go back out in the real world, right? And like to work to work in a factory that Chris Pine like worked at. Like, where did they go? You know, that's I don't. I'm not. They had to work nine to five somewhere. Yeah, yeah. That part wasn't fully clear on where they went to do. And you know, the other part that I thought was really interesting: the pregnant lady whose character name I forgot, which is not fair. She was very gossipy about all the things. And it's like, you know that the husband's telling her this, or at least to me, it felt like the husband's telling her this to sort of throw her off the trail Mm -hmm. of like what's actually happening. Um, And then this leads me to the question of when did you guys know that Olivia Wilde was in on it? (laughs) Or not in Uh, on it, but knew that it wasn't like knew the truth that she was uh, signed, fully signed, sealed, delivered. I think it was the bathroom scene where she gets so hurt by Florence Pugh okay. for wanting to know the truth. Yeah. yeah. Was that for you too, Mario? It, it, yeah. I knew she knew something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't, but then like, I knew she knew it, like, but I figured she was probably a bad guy too, like in on it. Yeah. yeah. But then, but then just to realize that her story is she just lost her so kids. So she likes it. Yeah. And so for her, yeah, it was more of a you... tragic and she right. chose to be there. So that did surprise me at that part. But yeah, I did. Yeah. No, she knew something. Because her, she, he wasn't, like, angry at Flo. She wasn't trying to redirect her or gaslight right. her or whatever. She was literally just like, I've just lost my only friend in this fucking simulation. Yeah. Because yeah. she's going to figure it out. Yeah. For me, it was when they were at the pool and the pregnant girl was like, my husband said and this, that, and the other thing. And she's looking around and she's, like, basically gives her the shut the fuck up face. Mm-hmm. I was like, mm-hmm. girls in on it. <laughs> We don't know how yet, but she knows the truth. <laughs> but so then, then I think she really, I think she really it. cared about Alice as a person yeah. too, because mm-hmm. I think it was just her trying to protect her. Because she even said, like, you know, they're going to kill you. Like, yeah, kill like you, you have to get out. You have so to get like, out. To her, it was not just shut the f up because you're going. I'm losing my friend, but I'm protecting you too. Because... Well, but like in the pool, yeah, like the whole time, I think that's what she's doing generally for all of yeah. the women. She's like mm-hmm. being mindful of like, don't because they will. Because what did she say? Like, if a man dies in here, he dies in real life, but they yeah. will come and find you. Yeah, they'll yeah. get so, your body. Mm-hmm. And she's so vulnerable. Like, all the women, you're in such a vulnerable state with the way they have the setup, which, oh my God. Because you're basically. Because I think also Harry was, like, in charge of, like, IVing her fluids and, like, keeping her lotioned up and supple and all of it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like having my eyes open. So, yeah, you definitely have to. No, I mean, like, during the day, but, like, forced open, right? Like, like when people are like, oh, you should get LASIK for your vision. One, I can't because I have astigmatism. And two, you have to sit there with your eyes wide open while they do it. it. Like, I'm good. I'm good. You have to hear Ever. it. You have to smell it. It's a whole sensory overload You would have issue. to dope me up so hard to make this happen. Don't watch Final Destination 4, then. No, <laughs> I've watched remember. the first Final Destination. I'm good. Like, I will never do a Final Destination Natalie again. knows what I'm talking about. I love the Final Destination franchise. Me too, me too. Oh, my God. No, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm um, <laughs> So can we talk about, so like Olivia Wilde was in it for a tragic reason. Like this was part of her grief cycle and who even like, I couldn't even tell if like, so is this something her husband's just doing? Because like, what do you do when your wife is in grief and and you won't think it made me think, are they even really a married couple? Right. Like, like, or did he snatch her? It's a simulation. Yeah. Because one of the questions that runs through when a, when we're figuring out that that's what's going on is who is your preferred wife? And then they go and body snatch them and put them in a tent. So I was like, well, could I pay like extra money? And my wife is Nambly Dormer. Like what's going on? <laughs> like, 
Is there like a pay plan or is it like, well, I would really like it if my husband, if my wife enjoyed having sex with me again. So I guess her. (laughs) Oh my god. But then the Gemma Chan of it all, where it's like, what was in this for Gemma Chan? Because that's what confuses me when she stabs Chris Pine Mm -hmm. through the gut. I'm like, Mm -hmm. cool girl, you're sick of being his doll. But she whispers to him like, it's my turn now. Well, what the fuck does that mean, Gemma? Are you just taking over the Sims factory? Like, what's happening? I think it's supposed to be open like that. I think that's the point. Because then, you know, not that I'm saying there needs to be a sequel because sequels are too much, but I think because we don't get a ton of backstory on her and we don't know where she is, but you can feel that she's trapped too. Mm -hmm. Like she has to play the perfect wife. She does the long stare of being exasperated so well that when she like took that knife and did the deed, I was like, that's my girl you're fucking done. I don't know what, I don't know what's going to happen to you. I don't know if you're going to be also as evil as Chris Pine, but at this moment you basically called off the guard. Good and for maybe, her. Maybe you'll go free too. I don't know, but you did it girl. Good for her. Good for her. <laughs> because if you think about it, if it wasn't for the whole, like I was just reprogrammed to be some morons fantasy. Mm hmm. It's not a bad deal. Like if it was just like a woman only commune and it was like we have pretty dresses and we get to sit by the pool and like we always have bacon. <laughs> like, <laughs> now... <laughs> and we killed Chris Pine. So we're just going to live our best like a line dress life and we're going to shop forward life. <laughs> but you then know... he's going to take care of you when you're lying there because the well, man has to take care of you. That's keep true. you alive. So That's right. mm-hmm. it's a complicated system, but I do appreciate just... too how you sort of see Flo's progression into reality, going back mm-hmm. into reality. Like the first time we meet her, they're so happy and in love, and she's wearing the white button down, and she's like the sexy little kitten housewife. And she does um, baby talk all the time. And then and then, you know, the first blip, the next day she's like in her beautiful house thingy or whatever. And then the next and then as she's slowly declining, it's becoming less and less polished Mm -hmm. and less and less desirable. But, you know, Harry's do he's in whatever world he's in, because apparently he's in more than one world. And, you know, he's just kind of living his life and figuring it out and and then when she does get you know <laughs> electro shocked back into it and she's back in her like i'm a sexy kitten look at how pretty i am and you're just like oh girl <laughs> you can't fight against electroshock therapy like there's no fighting against that like that is no. a thing that will fuck you up <laughs> but yeah the baby talk got me when she was when like her plate falls off her head or something and she's like not even fail because i was doing a good job and she distracted me I was <laughs> she, like, she did that in little women too though if you yeah. remember yeah do that so i don't know if it's just i don't know part of no, her process lawrence Peel yeah. is the only person who can make me feel anything for amy march so good for her <laughs> I mean, also true. And it helps that they sort of restructured Amy a little bit, too, in the newest yeah. version, because, you know, that speech she gives to Lori does not exist in the book Mm-mm. and would never exist. But I agree with Greta Gerwig's decision to add it because I feel like it was implied in Louis from Louisa May Alcott. Um, can we also talk about, like, Chris Pine's character is not just a creep. He's a mega creep. Because, mm-hmm. like, he walks in on Harry and Flo and just is like, yeah, I'm watching. <laughs> and you're just <laughs> like, oh, my God. Yeah, I was like, oh, this no. is a cult. And part of getting into Chris's Pines, like, cult is that he gets to fuck your wife. Like, it's that situation. Oh, it's just made me so uncomfortable. Plus, there was, like, an old dude one seat over. There wasn't anybody in between us. And I'm just like, I'm not comfortable with how many people over 65 are in this movie theater with some of these scenes happening. But that was (laughs) Sitting this close to me. If it was a packed house, I wouldn't care, right? Because it's whatever. But it's not a packed house. There's 20 people in here. 
So that was my first inclination, though, that the sex was actually part of the gaslighting, the simulation, and her reprogramming. Mm. Because you can see it on her face where she's like, I should be feeling something about this. Or I should be, like, telling about Harry to get... Watching. Yeah, about Harry getting off me. Like, she says nothing. She's yeah. just making frightened eye contact with Chris Pine. She's yeah. not alerting her husband that they've been caught or anything. And I'm like, oh... That's how he gets her back into it. Yeah. You know what I just realized? We didn't do a summary of the movie for anybody who hasn't seen it yet. So let me just do that really quickly. And friends, uh, if you listen to Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous, you know that I love to pull them from Google because Google sometimes says things and you're like, what? In the 1950s, Alice and Jack live in, a, in the idealized community of Victory, an experimental company town that houses the men who work on a top secret project. While the husbands toil away, the wives get to enjoy the beauty, luxury, and debauchery of their seemingly perfect paradise. However, when cracks in her idyllic life begin to appear, exposing flashes of something sinister lurking below the surface, Alice can't help but question exactly what she's doing in victory. <clears throat> See, I got a 60s vibe, not a 50s vibe. Yeah. But I don't I think, think it, it matters. I think it was also kind of a mashup of both of the decades mm -hmm. and it's interesting how the frame is your life is perfect woman because you get to be in this idyllic setting you get to be you get to go shopping you get to go swimming and i have to go work in this gross <laughs> disgusting thing but like as we were talking about over the weekend natalie and i were talking about over the weekend you know there's that level of stay-at-home wifeness isn't mm -hmm. a privilege for everybody right like women who think that like life was better when you were a stay-at-home wife who did take care of all the things and you it was so much easier and better that's not the truth for everybody like my people in the 50s and later <laughs> were mates raising their mm -hmm. children someone else's children you know so it's kind of like whose perfect world is this because all i see is a bunch of intelligent women sort of withering away um not allowed to have any potential or minds of their own or like with the pregnant gal they're like oh she's always pregnant remember how that's the one that's always pregnant like that sounds awful <laughs> yeah always and i think that guy must have had a pregnancy fetish, which, like, no shame. But I was like, okay, so if Olivia Wilde's children are fake and they're the only no. children who we've seen, how do no, you have hers a fake the... baby? Oh, yeah, they were fake. Or maybe Gemma Chan's kids were those creepy kids. They were the creepy kids. That was their kid. Yeah, was Gemma Chan's Chan. kids were the creepy kids. The ones that kids. were serving... <laughs> Yeah, yeah the ones that were serving the twins, and it they were dressed. It, what the like? Is it the twins from The Shining? Yeah, that's what they reminded me of. Yeah, Tweedledee and Tweedledee. Play with us, Danny. <laughs> oh, it's frozen. Just a moment. Here we go. Here we go. Are we back? Yeah, we're back. For that brief moment, we had a um. frozen moment. But yeah, well, and I think what's so timely about this movie coming out this weekend is last week was the week that TikTok um, chose to get me onto the side of TikTok where women are glorifying the 50s and 60s and being like, I don't know why women want to work. And I don't know why, like, everyone thinks that this is better. Like, equality is better, is it? Now we have to sit in an office, but also now the younger women don't want to work. And this, I was like, Oh, we oh. really are just like we just going oh. right back yeah. to the aprons. Yeah, and my the Prozac. <laughs> both of my grandmothers made it very clear: one worked as a maid, and one did odd jobs as a secretary or whatever else, or whoever, whatever, whoever would hire a black woman that day. Um, and made it very clear to me: you need to have your own money. Yeah, one hundred percent. You can't get divorced without money. You can't wake up and look at that man and be like, he's not great. Without knowing that you're going to have to like pay a lawyer 
and like also support yourself after probably years out of the workforce and all of it I still feel like it should be more expensive to get a marriage license to get it than to get a divorce. Correct. Because if it's more expensive to get it, not a wedding, because weddings are expensive, period. Throwing a party is just a big deal. But like the license itself should not be $37. (laughs) Like anybody can scrap together $37. I think they might even be cheaper in Vegas. (laughs) Like anyway, back. Oh, but I think. So I think that was what Harry Styles was starting to spiral about where he was like, well, if she's the one working. If she's the one that's bringing him money, then I have like no purpose in my home. And I'm clearly not cleaning anything because I'm just listening to Joe Rogan all day long. I can't even wash my own hair. So I also kind of took it as, you know, he's so convicted in his belief that he wants to make his wife's life easier because he's so convinced that she feels her life is hard and, you know, working 30 hour shifts, which should not be allowed even in the medical profession. I understand some surgeries take a really long time, but there really has to be a standard of care for our medical staff too, I would think. Um, but you know, to me, it kind of read like, he's like, I'm trying to, you know, and he screams that at her, you get to be here in this perfect world while I have to go back out there so we can pay for it. And she, and you know, she's just her whole like vibe of like, I can't believe you think that this is what I wanted. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Like, clearly you didn't talk to your wife about it. You know, if you don't, choose the medical profession to become a surgeon unless you have a passion for it like that's not a thing that someone's just like you know i think i'm gonna become a doctor and then spends the next 12 years and then decides you know what i just wasted 12 years of my life at some point through medical school you're going to realize i don't know when you're cutting in on a cadaver that it's not for you and i understand some people leave after 15 years or 10 years or whatever but like weeding out school weeds out pretty much people who aren't into it yeah that's the beauty of student teaching it Mm -hmm. makes all of the people who don't have the gut for it have the gut for it i sure don't have the gut to be a doctor are you kidding me um but i think i think what's also fascinating about psychological thrillers and i felt the same way about the best blockbuster of the summer bodies 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 oh is that gosh. we're always like oh my gosh how is like <laughs> how is someone outside of our of our of our universe or like the aliens or like the you know someone's gonna press a button and like that's what's gonna end the world and it's like we don't need the aliens to do it like or like god to decide that he's gonna smite us and flood us one more time like we're doing a really great job of doing it. Like we're ending our own world. We're even going backwards to do it. Like if we are currently living in a simulation and have been since 2012, it's because men won the war against women. <laughs> That's what's happened. Yeah. Did you guys have a favorite character in the film? Florence Pugh. I was gonna say Florence Pugh. Like, there's no question. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She but I did. I I did really like Bunny. So, yeah, I thought Olivia Wilde did a really great job. Yeah, and especially. Can- Go ahead. Especially considering what we heard about her, like shirking her directing um, duties and like being a terror on set and fighting with Flo and all of it. I was all like. The- but didn't the crew come out and say like yeah. that never happened exactly the crew was like no stop <laughs> like, yeah I'm like you stop with your lives the yeah. kids that played the her kids in the movie or at least the daughter anyway that was her daughter was it mm-hmm. was it oh that's cute mm-hmm. thanks jason for letting that happen signing whatever <laughs> paper you had to sign and then have delivered to set <laughs> stand up guy jason sadukas <laughs> Ted Lasso himself. Oh, I love Ted Lasso. I love so it. hard. I here's my other hot take. I can love Harry Styles despite the fact that he's a bad actor. You don't yeah. have to be good at all the things. Yeah, you know, I kind of got this vibe, like you know, because there's always one from the boy brand who breaks out and can do yeah. it all, right? Like Justin Timberlake is the only one I can think of from that but era. Can't. 
Nicholas Shea tried to act for a while, but it ended up on reality TV. Yeah, that's not. I mean, I'm I'm lumping that particular era in one. <laughs> oh, you're just doing Justin. I don't think Justin yeah. does a very good job in movies. Like, I he, don't think. He's I think he does in the right he, role. He does. He's ha- yeah. He's done movies that where he's performed really well because he's in the right role. Um, but like. And I think Harry, I think everyone thought that Harry would be the next boy band breakout because he did such a great job in his solo career and is doing a great job in his solo career. And it's just like all the press for My Policeman, which I was a movie I was very I am still very excited to see because I love the actor in it. Um, he was in The Last Kingdom and and then Aaron Corbin, Aaron Corbin, Eben, em, Emma Corbin. She played know. Diana in the crown. Anyway, so some of the cast, I was just like, oh, I love these people. I'm so excited. And I love looking at Harry. Okay. And then when he was talking about the, how the movie's about wasted time, and I was like, did we watch the same trailer? Because <laughs> I got that this movie was about a man who doesn't understand his sexuality, and it's the mid century. So yeah. now there's a lot of heartache. And maybe wasted time is a theme, but I didn't feel like wasted time came well, maybe through he meant, in like, the trailer. Maybe he meant like romantic waste of time. I don't know. He doesn't seem very bright. And then like, when he said about this, I love this movie because movie, it feels, it like, feels a like a movie. And then Chris Pine withered away into dust. <laughs> it was I funny. Mean, I, honestly, was re- I was reading was- some... Um, like blogs and stuff, and they said that Harry did really bad interviews during the Venice Film Festival, and so that's why he you haven't seen him on like talk shows promoting the movie because yeah. nobody wants to interview him because they're like, yeah, he's horrible. And you yeah. know what? If he's not bright, that's fine too. Like you don't have to be good at all of the things for Natalie to love you. Like do your little songs, wear your glittery outfits, make out with Shania Twain. Oh, like, I love that video so hard from Coachella Lane. <laughs> I think he's. I think he would do better as like a supporting role, yeah, not a lead role, because he was in Dunkirk and he had some lines and oh, he was right. fine in that. Like oh, he I was fine. See Dunkirk. He needs a five liner. He was in it. I'll have to watch it. Um, yeah. I didn't Honestly, realize he was in it. Why didn't they talk about that more? I think they did. They did Dang. because it was. This, I think that was his first starring role. I don't oh. watch war, movies. but he was support. Oh, interesting. I just watch it because it's Christopher Nolan. I mean, I don't want I have to. a hard time with more war-ish type movies. Right. But that's a whole other conversation. Um, <laughs> Apparently, I can't function unless it's a rom-com, you guys. Apparently not. <laughs> this, um, this hour and a half is brought to you by me needing to know if Chris Pine is in fact okay. Like, <laughs> are you fine, Chris? <laughs> I realize that they made you do a lot of bullshit for this movie. I realize that they made you babysit Harry the entire time. And I know that the Dungeons and Dragons movie is making you babysit Hugh Grant the entire yeah. time. Oh my God. So I just Chris like Pine's you in can, his babysitting British men right, phase of career. Like, you can reach out, Chris Pine, if you're not fine. However, I do love this evolution of Chris Pine only wearing silk pajamas everywhere. Oh, that he his goes. um grandma, his grandma beat chic or whatever it's yes. called. Yeah. He is dressing like all of our great aunts who had a roommate for their entire life. Yeah, yeah. And I love <laughs> it. Yeah. I still think he's adorable. Great aunt chic. I would hang out with Chris Pine any day of the week. Like, I have dreams where I'm going to the, like, Dungeons and Dragons premiere. Uh And it's just, like, me, Hugh, and Chris just, like, shooting the shit. Hugh Grant making his little BDSM jokes and me being like, what do you know about it, old man? And then Chris Pine, like, just laughing because I'm charming. With a a prostitute and when he was (laughs) dating Liz Hurley, that's where it probably started. (laughs) Justice for that sex worker. She yes, can't help she... that Hugh Grant was cheating on. Exactly. What, was her name Devon? What was her name? I don't remember. I don't remember. I was... You still all know her name. I'm sure if we Googled it, it'll come rest up. In, rest in memory, that woman that yeah. Hugh, Jant, <laughs> Hugh, Hugh Grant paid for a blowjob. Yeah. I feel like. I feel like we blow blowjobs way out of proportion. Like, I don't know. I don't care that Hugh Grant. Or our president got a blowjob. <laughs> I was going to say Orville Clinton, who cares? <laughs> um, no but, care. I mean, I feel like for how often the paparazzi captures Chris Pine coming out of a bookstore, I feel like he and I need to go to the bookstore together. 
Chris Reed's. He didn't want to hear Harry call a movie a movie. He right. Was like a poor... he and he reads look... like deep wait, shit. Because, you know, when I'm just Google Chris Pine Pop, you know, because he's holding up the spines and you're just like, oh, he... I see what you're reading, Chris. And I I think that you are an intelligent man. Thank he you, literally sir. like the look that he gave after Harry Styles went, it's a movie <laughs> that feels like a movie because it's a movie. I was like, oh. My grandma Peg used to make that face at me right before she'd like threaten to backhand me because I was being <laughs> such a dumbass. And then it, yeah. I was like, that's Chris Pine's like, oh, you think you're real damn cute look, don't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> like he's embarrassed. He's disappointed. Yeah. He's going to make you pay for that later. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mario, I want your I want to know your opinion about the cinematography because I know you pay attention to that stuff. Not that I, I say, don't, but you pay attention more I, than I do. I was gonna say it's so beautiful. It like, is a beautiful the, movie. The, the housing and just the like the pool, like the shopping center, even like the mountains, just like the mountain mm -hmm. display yeah. and stuff. That that whole ch car chasing at the end was just beautifully shot. Yes. Like you just go in and you go out and you're just like, oh my god. Yeah. Her and like, that it was bus great. on her own, that was a good thing too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, now do we know where they shot the film no i could figure no. that out though because i feel the... like the intention is for it to feel like palm springs like that because the pa palm springs was like the playground to i mean it still kind of is a playground to celebs but not in the way it was in lucy lucille ball's day it was palm springs no, they filmed it in palm springs oh i'm so filming... proud of myself yeah, for figuring yeah. that palm out springs yeah, in LA. You but knew Palm it. Springs. Yeah. Um, one of the dings that Olivia is getting is that she spent too much time on her atmosphere and not enough time on her character development and story. And I'm like, oh, I was like, everybody hates it when we take a moment to take in the landscape and to get to like know the like fucking area that we're in. I feel like that's a character in the film. And it needed to, ha and I don't feel like it was more fleshed out than the care than the human characters in the film. Like mm. you fully under, at least I did fully understood, you know, Bunny and her husband's role in the world. You know, the pregnant lady and her husband. Like you get it. Like you you could drop in on mm -hmm. any given day and fully understand the dynamic, fully understand who these people are, who's gonna gossip about what, like. I, I mean, and maybe because I lived in a, a version of that world with like mom world with kids for a while. I don't know. I'm not going to assume that's why I fully got it because well, I feel like it was full. I feel like it was fleshed out really, really well. Honestly, I went in to the movie thinking that Alice and Jack were going to be the new couple in town. Mm. So when it opened it up and they were clearly like well established mm -hmm. and Jack's on his way to a promotion and all that. Yeah. What are your thoughts, Mario? I was just, I was, I was really thinking, so that did, that did give me a question. Like what was the promotion? Like what did he have to do to get that promotion in real right. life? Because Nick Kroll already had it because it was the ring. Yeah. Because Nick Kroll already was in that promotion. And the other two guys, the other husbands were like vying for it too. Like, oh, I hope he picks me. I wonder if it's Jack. like. I wonder if it's like a recruitment process for the Victory Project. Oh, it's Maybe. just a, it's a pyramid scheme. Not what only is, yeah. not only is it Sims, but it's Sims, but with a pyramid scheme. Like, and Here's your MLM uh, anti-MLM story. And that's why they have to leave. Because they're recruiting people. Because they're recruiting other sad, lonely men. Mm. I mean, again, I mean, in, in Olivia Wilde's case, it was she's the one who was like, honey, let's do this. Or at least that's what I assumed when she said that she lost her kids. Yeah. But it's yeah. still mostly the men. Mm. It's just really like refreshing. And I told Natalie this on Saturday to see a movie that's not trying too hard to be smart. It's just smart. And it makes me like, what, like how it just it bums me out that everybody hates it because <laughs> it's not trying too hard at all. Well, it's a very, it's not a simple plot, but you, I, you follow along, you kind of figure out what's going on. 
I didn't think that because I figured out what was going on, that didn't ruin it for me. It kept me engaged to see if I was fucking right. <laughs> well, and you know what it made me remember? It, rem- it made me remember all of the period pieces, television shows that were about women that ABC or another American television company tried to do and they got one season and were done. Like, mm-hmm. I love the Christina Ricci one about the airline. Mm. Um, oh, I forgot about that Pan show. Am. What was that called? I loved Pan, Pan Am. Am. Oh, yeah. Pan I Am. Also, the one about like where they threw all of the astronauts into the same neighborhood and it was all about how the wives had to was maintain. Was it Space it. Wives? It might have been. Or, or First Astronaut wives. wives. Astro Wives. Something like that, yeah. Space Wives. Space yeah. Wives. I like my title better. And they literally had to just like keep up appearances because like what if your husband didn't get to go to space because your hair didn't look great like mm, uh. mm-hmm, mm-hmm. or the one that took place in the i mean 70- you know they would have told me 55 60 years ago that i need to fix my hair look at i mean nowadays yeah. i can wear my natural hair but that was not a thing that you had to even curly haired girls who were white it was not a thing and then like uh the one in the 70s about the women who were running the feminist magazine it got like eight episodes and then they canceled it and then i think hulu or netflix were supposed to pick it up and then they the didn't one about the seven. you're not talking about good girls revolt are you yeah that one they were working at a magazine that was supposed to be like time magazine but it wasn't time magazine but it was the 60s or the 70s yeah and then and gloria steinem was a character in that show wasn't she or like someone that they were always talking Nora about. Nora Ephron. Or Nora Was Efron. a character. Meryl Streep's daughter played her. And then she leaves to go to the Post who actually is willing to print women. Because no magazine will print women at that time. Yeah. Which is true. Like Nora Ephron literally left to go to a, a print publication that would was willing to publish her. It's literally all of these stories where it's like, well, this is how women were choosing to do what they needed to do during the times of their own oppression. Where, like, everyone's like, we don't want to watch that. Who wants to watch women talking about, like, how we won't pay them enough money? (laughs) Who wants to talk? Who wants to listen to women talk about how, like, how they should have body autonomy? Like, what do you mean that I, Harry Styles, don't own your body and can't program it? To be my living sex pot little sex doll. Yeah. I wonder, too, if somebody else had... Um, because even the screenwriter uh, ju- just... Uh, I can see it. Shoot. Hold well, on. you know, so... I know Katie that- Silberman, you know, she took she wrote the script but it's based off of something else written by two guys i believe as i was reading in one of my reviews that i looked up today and like even the screenwriters getting you know people are kind of giving her flack for not writing a very well developed script and i thought wow that's very interesting and i wonder because you know we talk about this on over on pop culture a couple times a few times whenever it is relevant you know in the hands of a male director and a female writer stories are very very different when you have a female writer and a female director or a male director and a male writer but it's a female centric story like the outcome is always different and i wonder what would have happened and what would be the conversation if olivia wilde was oliver wilde and you know would she be he be getting criticized like this well i mean dating the star of the movie 10 years her his senior his junior like hello like that shit's been happening in hollywood all the time with with male directors like look at brad pitt just came out dating what's her face like that was confirmed today or something like that. oh no no they're not dating they're just talking and not dating yet like but she's 14. like yeah and she's like I don't know, younger than everybody on this call, and he's old enough to, you know, be my father. Well, and let's think about all of the movies that were run by men who, that, like, literally it, like, they're just, like, a garbled nothing of a story, and then we applaud them for years to come. Like, fucking Forrest Gump. Like, what the fuck is Forrest Gump about? Oh, don't come at Forrest Gump. <laughs> I don't like that movie. <laughs> Like, but do you like that movie or were we conditioned to be like, this is a great movie? No, I do actually <laughs> like that movie. <laughs> it's a weird ass movie. 
I think that's the point. <laughs> um, there are <laughs> other there are other movies where I end up watching them and I'm like, Fight Club. Every man wants to build his entire life around fucking Fight Club, and I'm I like, I just I, I but I see I like Chuck Palahniuk, who's the author of Fight Club, so like that's a hard one for me too. Um, well, then you come up with one. No, uh, no I'll back switch, you up. No, like, I'm going to switch topics. I'm going to ask. I want to ask what gossip around this movie did you get into the most? Chris Pine hating Harry Styles. That's all I wanted. I wanted petty, petty <laughs> memes of Chris Pine looking like he wanted to pass away. Like I didn't give a fuck that Olivia Wilde was fucking Harry Styles. Number one, I thought we were all well aware of that. Yeah, I thought we knew that. I was like, why are people surprised that she's fucking Harry Styles? I feel like. Like I've known that for five years. Well, because they start, they met, they started dating because they met on set, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. When did when did they actually film this movie? Last year, sometime. Was it probably? last year? Or like Florence Pugh, like not wanting to work with Shia LaBeouf. I was like, that's valid. No one should want to work with Shia LaBeouf. No one wants oh. to watch Shia LaBeouf have sex with Flor- Florence Pugh. They <laughs> wrapped on February thirteenth, twenty twenty one. Okay, so yeah. So yeah. So that would have been like so if they twenty twenty had... through twenty twenty one, yeah. Yeah, because it says it says the uh filming was halted temporary temporarily for two weeks for on COVID. November fourth after a crew tested positive for COVID nineteen. Mm-hmm. So it was a um, long shoot. Yeah. So that makes sense. That tracks then because all of 2021 is when we were hearing about like speculation about Harry because Dumois, as you both know, I love to follow like she was on that story big time. Like she's like, they're totally dating. Here's photo proof and no one else is talking about it. And then all of a sudden, you know, the print mags are printing it online. Harry and Olivia dating. And I'm like, old news. (laughs) Also already new. (laughs) I'm confused by everyone's confusion that you would, number one, be on a COVID set where you can only speak to the people that you were on set with because of testing and COVID yeah, and it all says of that it. The stars had to quarantine. Pew, Styles, and Pine all had to be quarantined when that And be surprised pumped. that it just doesn't become a fuck fest because there's nothing else to do. <laughs> like, Especially if you're in Palm Springs. Like, I mean, that's the Palm Springs has a lot going for it but it's also the desert it's a and desert. if they're filming okay so if they're filming in this winter that's actually the best time to be in palm springs um but still you know if the end of 2021 was everything open in california i'm trying to remember when did the state fully reopen mario do you remember it was like probably right before summer hit like yeah it started opening up yeah because i feel like some places were still oh my god you guys they were filming in Palm Springs when I was in Palm Springs. I just oh put that gosh. together. Did you see them like I saw David Duchovny and returned to me? No, but I Aww. wish now I had known I they did. were filming when I was there because then I would have dragged those people I was with to, to when, find. When I was oh. a kid, I was at the Lincoln Park Zoo the day that they were filming Return to Me in the gorilla house. Ha ha. I still did it. <laughs> <laughs> But I really do think that, like, when we all, like, collectively clutch our pearls because someone, like, fucked someone else on a movie, I was like, y'all never been in an office before. People fuck at work. (laughs) You spend a lot of time at work. And you have hormones. And you have, like, hard-ons and all of it. And people fuck at work. (laughs) Well, and then, too, when you're doing something, like, being on set or in a play is like summer camp. You're only doing it for so much time and it's a different vibe and you don't get it unless you've been there kind of thing. Like, when I came back from the summer art program, I met this guy from this small town and i was like oh one of the gals on my floor when i went to this program is from there and he's like oh yeah i know who she is um so you went there too and i was like yeah and he's like oh is was it as amazing as she talks about and i was like yeah and he's so gross because you know (laughs) when you because when you come back from this program that's literally all you can talk about it was the it's an intensive art program for creatives it's for high school kids it's so amazing i mean it's been 20 years since i've been and i still think about it and i still think about how life-changing it was and eye-opening it was for me I hate when we demonize excitement. Like, what's that guy's deal? Get a hobby. (laughs) But, but also, like, I'm not, I'm not 
validating his anger or saying it was right. I'm just saying like, as a person who's been on the other side of the coin where I'm like, I ha- I'm not a part of something and that you are so adamant about like it some now that I've had experiences where I've been like, oh, this is a magical thing that I can't recreate. And I realized too, that I'm chasing that still. Like I want that the magic, like I love having groups of people where we have a shared experience that no one else is a part of. Should and that's I- what art school was. And that's what sets are if you have a good set. And that's what a play, you know, a stage play is if you have a good crew and a good cast and, you know, people who aren't involved don't get it. And I think that's what's hard. And see, it's the same with musicians, people in bands. Like if you're not there, you don't always get it because you are isolated. You are working with people 12 hours a day. You are sort of creating these bonds that are, centered around something that you're very passionate about so it's not i don't know see I've and it's been... not a thing where it's like i'm going to be working here for 20 years because you could be in the business for 20 years but you have different teammates every six months no i'm months. still on team that guy is gross because here's the thing i can make a trip to target magical maybe i'll make a powerpoint and sell it yeah. for 200 dollars a download about how to make the mundane magical so that when someone gets to go to the Dungeons and Dragons premiere, you're not some salty little petty bitch who's like, I've never even seen a movie before, let alone go to a oh, okay. movie premiere. How dare you be excited about your exciting thing that you paid money for and worked at? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it's, it's, it was a four week long in program. I don't remember, but you know, you're gone for a long time. So there's growth that happens that people don't always understand and that's what that was what was hard for me coming back is like I just had this really awesome experience where I was around literally hundreds of other types of artists and then to come back to Modesto and be like (sighs) I mean we sat on grassy knolls and like wrote and draw while the musicians played while the filmmakers were making movies and like it was I I I I just wish that was my whole life all the time I mean (laughs) You can come and visit Cox Arboretum. It's two minutes up the hill. It's got (laughs) ducks. It's got koi fish. It's got giant dinosaur turtles. It's always got some lady doing yoga, someone doing a photo (laughs) art exhibit, like just like taking wildlife photos. Someone's always got an acoustic guitar and someone's always having an adorable picnic. It's literally the perfect metro park that's cute that's cute but i mean like be you know you're like becoming friends with filmmakers future filmmakers and you know doing all these things and then you live in the dorms together and you eat your meals together and then you go to the cafe to listen to whatever band is playing and then if you're 18 like i am you're walking across the street to the store to buy everybody's cigarettes because no one's old enough but you (laughs) i didn't do that (laughs) i hope that was that guy like romantically linked to that girl? Because I hope she dumped him. And if she didn't, I... she needs to call me. I don't know. I don't know. It was 20 years we, ago. I am not sure. We but, don't have you know... sex with men who don't appreciate our joy. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It was just, we it was a random, it. it was totally random how I met him because I'd never met anybody else from that tiny town before. Um, and we were at a punk show. We so. don't. We don't buy birthday cards for bitches who don't enjoy our joy, and we don't fuck men who don't enjoy our joy. And that's the moral of the movie. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I mean, what was your favorite rumor, Mario? I get confused when people are like, what do you mean people have sex? Give me some simmering petty any day against a rampant sexual desire for Harry Styles. My fear was when Florence Pugh and Olivia Wilde had a screen match. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, dang, that'd be it's, fun to watch. Number one, it took me right back to like Joan Crawford and who was she What's famous? Her name? Yeah. Who is she famously always in a feud with? They just did like it was a show too. Yeah, yeah. they just just did did a show on it. They called it Joan and Betty. Betty was it Betty Davis? Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, like just like the fact well, number one, the movie takes place in a time where women really had to feel like um they were in competition to one another, and then that mirrored the fact that we kept 
pinning Olivia and Flo yeah. against one another. And we're like, you're just making Olivia's point. <laughs> yeah, that's I know. You know what? That could totally be, you know, part of the if it was all planted gossip, that's, you know, part of the plan. I do think it would be interesting to see only because they're like a foot apart. You know, you know, when people who are like abnormally heighted from each other are fighting, mm-hmm. you're just like, how? I put taller. Why are you fighting? Well, I'm from a- window because she has all that stun training. She's from crabby. Marvel. From Black Widow. Yeah. Yeah. That's so true. she's like, I take you and just destroy you. With but I feel thighs. like Olivia would fight dirty. She would fight dirty or something. Yeah. Like she'd bring out one of those brass knuckles and just like scrappy. Olivia Wilde and I have the same birthday. So yes, I will I will concur. I will agree with you. I feel like she would fight dirty because I would fight dirty if I needed to. <laughs> No. You're not going to put the we don't it fuck was... people who don't enjoy our joy either. It's just the birthday card. It's just the birthday card. I feel like you missed the most important part of the lesson. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> sorry. I did. I did. I, I thought that another juicy one was when um, Olivia was saying that he, Shia got fired. Yeah. But he didn't. He quit. He quit. Yeah. And then they had, and then that video popped up of her like trying to convince him to come back. Yeah, like did like, Shia send just that a, video like, to yeah, Variety? He was like, I got receipts. And I was yeah. just like, girl, you're just digging yourself a hole right here. The like, only time, <laughs> the only time I've ever wanted to talk to Shia LaBeouf is to like figure out, like, let me see your phone. Yeah. yeah. Let me see your phone. What's like, don't be weird stamp? about it. Just What's like, don't timestamp. Yeah. Like, don't be weird about it. Like, no, I don't want you to show me your phone. I want it in my hand and I want to scroll through it. Don't be weird about it. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> just let me see your phone. I won't tell anybody, but I would like to know. <laughs> I won't tell anybody, but I would like mm. to know. Well, and then yeah, and like, I thought he was, I thought he was booted out of Hollywood. Like, when did, when was he gracefully received back? I think when he played his abusive um, father in Honey Boo Boo or whatever that movie was called. It wasn't Honey Boo Boo. It was like Honey Child. <laughs> like, what? How about yeah. I have no yeah. knowledge oh, of what you're talking about? I haven't about. watched that movie yet, but I am obsessed that, like, number one, Shia LaBeouf told his abusive father, Honey that he, Boy. Honey Boy. That he was going to do this movie. And his father said, oh, who's going to play me? And then Shia LaBeouf went, don't worry, it's going to be Brad Pitt. Or so, like someone else ridiculous. And then Shia LaBeouf went so meta that he played his own abusive father abusing a tinier Shia LaBeouf. Yeah. It's crazy. It has big crazy. Jeanette McCurdy energy to it. <sighs> that book. Oh, my God. <laughs> And so I think then people were like, you know, oh. it went into the second printing within like a month. Yeah. That's unheard of. So I think people were like, oh, Shia, come on. You you serious. You better than that kid from suburbia. Come on. And so they welcomed him back. And then like, I like how he tried to blame Flo for like shia LaBeouf not being in this movie like it was going to make or break the movie where it was like well i too would be kind of freaked out if i had to work with shia LaBeouf. you don't always know how he is is he a, is he is he a method actor do you uh, I believe know? so yeah working with a method actor in a film that's got emotional abuse in it yeah. i can't even imagine it, it being method is a rare form anymore anyway i get it because it is easier to go into your character and stay there while you're doing the whole day um, or week or months or whatever you choose to however well, you choose to interpret that because it is hard to go in and out. Like it's not hard. Like it's a hard thing to do. It's just emotionally taxing on you when you are playing a shitty character to go constantly in and out between takes. I, um, I would also like love for the mystery to be solved for me on whether or not, flow complained because i like the vibe that i'm getting is that like shia labeouf showed up to set and that like florence pew wasn't like warm but she wasn't like cold well, and she's then british, shia, so i mean right. that it's not and, like they're the most welcoming of people they and then conquered sh- the world <laughs> and then shy went you hate me and then flow like tried two or three times to be like i don't hate you i just have like shit going on we don't have to hang out yeah it's also a pandemic 
And he was like, you hate me. And then he had some like tantrum and then quit. Mm. <laughs> I don't even think she complained about him. Mm. I don't even think that they were filming for her to complain about it. Yeah, because yeah, I got the impression that they hadn't started filming yet when he was replaced. Um, But I don't know. Okay. Final question of the night. What's your comfort level with this movie? Oh, that's the final question of the night. I have a question. Just, wait, okay, go ahead, Mario. <laughs> because in the beginning, this was going to be such a an award winning movie mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. like noms for everything. Mm-hmm. Do you think there's still awards chances at all for this film? No, I think they. Fucked or do you it. think it's going to be like because of all the drama, because yeah, of the critical I- response? It's like. We're never going to hear about this movie again. I, I think once they rolled in the circus tent that they really fucked it. Because now I mm. think what it did was it put into people's mind like this was a movie that they had to start a circus about to be a shit show. And therefore the movie is a shit show. So all mm. people are going to be doing is t- talking about what a big shit show this was for all of that drama to happen. Well, okay. and you know, when you read the reviews, they always they're all citing the some some facet of the drama around it what i think is kind of a shame is that they decided to release the film in september rather than in december so that way you you're because you know a lot of the films that get released between december 21st and december you know because the last day to enter for the academy awards you have to uh run for so many days and you have to be um in theaters in la and new york by november december 25th right Mm-hmm. I think is what how it works, and it's a shame that they didn't do it at Christmas because then you're more in the forefront when it comes to like okay now we're gonna start nominating. Whereas in September, everything that's like September forward mostly gets forgotten. Um, so regardless of the drama, I feel like it has the potential to it had the potential to get forgotten regardless of drama around it. I don't think the drama um is gonna help like would the year that um get out got get out got nominated right for best mm-hmm. screenplay mm-hmm. when that mm-hmm. got nominated i was like yo that movie dropped in february like who the fuck remembered like good job because if movies in february don't get recognized you don't drop mm-hmm. the blockbuster award winning films in february you don't really do that that's not a thing january through like may because memorial day weekend is when you start sort of seeing the bigger films that may be a contender maybe but are still forgotten about and it's you know thanksgiving weekend through the end of through christmas day is when you see everything that's getting released that they really think is going to be a contender and i and i i think it's a shame that the studio didn't drop it in that window rather than in september Because Florence, again, I go back to Florence Pugh's performance is so flawless. It is a lesson in how to perform. And she, if she, and she, the chances of her getting overlooked are greater now. Yeah. I think, I think it's really unfortunate that they had to roll out the circus Mm -hmm. tent. But I also think it's unfortunate that they're getting so much fire for rolling out a circus tent where we've seen circus tents before and we've ignored them yeah what do you think mario um i was really thinking about this too because i was like dang i like you said her role was flawless and it was like oh she deserves the best actress and um i see possibly golden globes oh yeah Yeah. since they are bringing golden globes back and Mm -hmm. golden globes tend to you know share the love with movies that people don't remember or right. movies that weren't good. I mean, we they always refer back to the why was the tourist rated for, you know, running for best picture when it was like right. the worst movie of the year. Right. Um, so I'm hoping that the Golden Globes will shine some light on the film. Like, whether it's just Florence Pugh, I hope. And I feel like if they do, they it might bring some attention to the Oscars. Right. I don't I don't see her getting a nom. I think the I think the competition this year is just too it's too tough. It's too well, tough. And because of all the drama behind it, I feel like it did hurt its chances. Mm-hmm. But I see it. I see a couple noms for Golden Globes. That is my yeah. prediction. Well, I do, Golden Globes does a nice job of ignoring whether 
because like the Oscars, it's like these same six films will be yeah. best picture noms mm-hmm. and best score noms and best yeah. actor nom. Yeah. So Gl- Golden Globes is more of like a family reunion grab bag yeah. buffet mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. it's like, oh, don't worry, Darlene may have been an okay movie but florence Pugh did a really good job so let's at least recognize her yeah and it's fine for them to just nominate her for that one thing mm-hmm. yeah yeah and you know what screen actors guild's really good at too because it is only about performances and actors rather than mm-hmm. everything else i would like to see the costume designer nominated because yeah. i think mm. she did a really great job i think there's a lot of symbolism in the costumes that you know we didn't talk about tonight but that's okay we can do it another day um and i think that the set designer did a fantastic job of creating a world that feels idyllic and like it haunting and haunting and but at the same time i feel like lucille ball is gonna show up with desi arnaz at any minute because that's what celebrities did they ran off to palm springs or palm desert to get away from hollywood right so to create that that feel for like this is where we recoup so we can have another version of our life like holy shit give that person a nomination for something well it's also one of the rare psychological thrillers where I myself wasn't tense or stressed throughout the movie. And I think that was also intentional mm-hmm. because it's like, why would you be stressed? You're with us in paradise. Yeah. So you're not really stressed until she's hitting him on the head. And you're right. like, oh, Flo, we done did it. Right. <laughs> right. So it, I think it will be sad if it doesn't get any recognition um, at all. You know, obviously, like Olivia Wilde's going to get ignored for director nods because that's just how she it does. works with women and directors in Hollywood. But yeah. I would, you know, it'd be nice to see, like, like you say, Mario, a Golden Globe, or even a Screen Actors Guild. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So back to your question. <laughs> okay. Did you get all your questions in, Mario? I did. I'm sorry. I did. I, did. I didn't mean to ignore you. No, you're good. Okay. My, no, now back to our final question of the night. How. What is your comfort level with this film? I feel like Don't Worry Darlene made me comfortable in a very uncomfortable way. Mm. Because, again, it served a lot of affirmation for what I think about the world at large anyways. And where women are currently in our culture and society and the value that we hold. And whether or not it's actually gotten better. Mm. Mm. And so... It's uncomfortable to sit in a movie and go, huh, I fully believe that at any moment some petty rich man could body snatch me and put me in a simulation if he wanted that much control over me. Like, But it's also comforting to know that I'm right and I'm on top of the game and that you can't play me because I already know your game. But it also, like Olivia Wilde's, or not Olivia, Gemma Chan's character makes me uncomfortable because she's one of those women who links herself with powerful men to be like, and this is how I will leech my power. Mm. And Olivia Wilde is allowed to ignore the suffering of other women so she herself can be comfortable. And these are very much real things that happen. So it was a very affirming movie for me. Like, I left fist pumping. I was like, I fucking knew it. This is how they see us. I want to march. <laughs> so there. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. Everyone's Ron and a hater. <laughs> what about you, Mario? Um, I'm comfortable with the uncomfortability, mm-hmm. I guess. Because, uh, I mean, I it's, it's a tale as old as time, really. Um, it's just very modern and we see it all the time and even as a man i see it so it's Mm -hmm. just like it's like some of these guys you're like do better please yeah (laughs) like but i'm one of the minority i'm one of the minority i feel like joe rogan looking at you (laughs) (laughs) yeah but i I did enjoy the movie a lot a lot more than i thought i would i'm just like i said i'm sad that all the behind the scenes drama Mm -hmm. you know Mm -hmm. kind of overshadow this film because i think a lot more people would have loved it. Yeah. They didn't know all the drama. Yeah. 
Yeah, like that writer from before that I mentioned from the New York Times, she her daughter knew nothing about any of the drama, walked into it blind and walked out going, I love this film. It was a movie that I wanted to see from the very first time a trailer dropped on it. Yeah, same. Um, I also feel very comfortable with this film for so many reasons. And I feel like, you know, they did a really good job. I walked out like Natalie. I walked out thinking, oh, my God, I'm so glad I'm not the only person on the planet that sees it. Like, this is so validating. It's just like in our Thelma and Louise episode. Yeah. It's upsetting that we still have to, like, these things are still relevant today and we haven't made much progress. But at the same time, you know, a movie like this wouldn't have been able to be made 30 years ago. And so that's a form of progress, if you will. Um, And I loved it. <laughs> I have a follow-up comfy question. Okay. How comfy are we with living and knowing that there is a possibility that the drama was staged. Because for me, I'm like, roll the dice on that. Like, if you knew that your movie was on the fence and it was like, it might pull a crowd, it might not. It's actually probably going to piss off a lot of people. Roll the dice with your Harry Styles drama and see if you can get girls in your theater just to be like, he may spit on Chris Pine. <laughs> I don't know if it was. I, I really don't think it was fabricated. I think it may have been exaggerated. Yeah. A little more than I, but I feel like there was tension there. I felt like people didn't like each other at certain points, or people were tired of their. It I will mean, because make... I mean, because I mean, you see, Chris Pine, Florence Pugh didn't do any press for it, right? Like, yeah, like he's not usually a you're, social you're, media you're, person. No, but, but he though, usually you're, does you're press still... for his stuff. Like he's yeah. never one to shy away from the junket. No. So to see that, and even that, yeah. even seeing like them at the Venice Film Festival, where they kind of were just like civil, but they weren't yeah. like like compared to other films where everyone was like hugging each other. Yeah, oh, like the so bullet train again. cast. Oh my yeah. god, you could not keep those guys off each other. But it was just like, yeah, like. Well, I also have to wonder, like, how much we have to chalk up a set's dynamic to being a COVID heavy set dynamic. So it's like. How well are you allowed to get to know yourselves or how well, easy is it to snipe with one another if you're quarantining together? Well, and I, but I think that, you know, goes back to a lot of other things, too. Like Mario was saying, some of the casts from other films that debuted at Venice and Toronto and what have you, they don't have a chemistry problem. No. You know, you see them on stage and they're like they're reuniting on the red carpet like it's their long lost brother that they've missed forever. I'm also on the fence on whether or not the drama was staged because, again, I go back to, you know, my obsession with Dumas and some of the stuff that she posts and some of the stuff that the other gossip rags post. And then, you know, with Dumas, at least she comes back and says, you guys, I don't vet any of this information. So whatever you share with me and I share it out, take it with a grain of salt. But the following that the gossip rags have people aren't taking it with a grain of salt they're taking what the, is being posted and running with it and it just we live in the age where everything becomes wildfire because everybody has a computer and a camera in their hand well <clears throat> and the unfortunate thing is whether or not they liked one another the movie got made and the movie was a good movie yeah so i think we also have to let go of this expectation that like Everyone should be making out with one another, and that's how we support one another. They supported one another by showing up and doing their job. So right. I will be sad if Olivia Wilde and Florence Pugh, like, literally are women who can't be in the room with other um, with each talented other. women. Mm -hmm. Because it's like, I don't get that vibe from Florence because she was in the, like, Little Woman reboot. Well, and, and when she was reunited with Scarlett Johansson on the yeah. Black Widow, you know, for Black Widow on the red carpet, the, there wasn't an issue. It was like yeah. sisters being reunited. So, and, you know, go I will be sad if that's Olivia's story. I don't know if it's Olivia's story per se, but I do know there are some women on this planet that I cannot be in the same room with because we do not jive. Right. And, and I think that's, that's fine. Valid. And I hope to God I never have to work with them because if I do and if we were famous, there will be tabloid headlines about screaming matches, even though we spoke 
tersely to each other because that's probably what happened. They were probably yeah. just curtly speaking to each other and someone was like, they were screaming at each other. Well, I also think that a lot of the reason why we have conflict management issues in our society is because we still play with kindergarten rules, like sharing is caring, um, make new friends but keep the old. Like, yeah. everyone has to be a friend. Everybody mm -hmm. has to get along and do after work drinks and happy hour and yeah. co-worker karaoke night and it's like some people literally just want to do their job and go home yeah like i've never subscribed to being friends with my co-workers i've actually seen co-workers take each other down and get like bff bestie best friend co-workers and then when it comes down to it who's getting fired one of them throws the other one under the bus and so you know that was in my formative career so after that i was like i will never be Become close friends with anybody I work with because you could turn on me. Um, all right, friends. Um, Mario, tell us where everyone can find you if they want to keep up with you online. Uh, you can follow me on my Instagram page at Movies with Mr. Mario, where I do movie reviews and keep up with the latest movie news, gossip, and entertainment. Did you do a review for Don't Worry, Darling, or were you waiting until after I was? Uh, I was going to wait till after tonight because I okay, didn't we will reshare it. it on we the will reshare it. culture. Um, I look because I would love to see your grade. I'm not, I don't want you to give it to us now because I don't want any. I want everyone to go to your page to see what your grade is. Okay. And you, if you've been hoping that my freak flag would fly and I would get to talk about scary movies more on the internet, Mario is giving me that platform yeah. to do it. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> All right, Natalie. Where can Hi. You? I'm Natalie Katona. I wore a bow in my hair as a nod to the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> I'm your host of Tall the Men I've Tolerated Before, which means each week you can hear me give you clues as to why we might wake up to The Handmaid's Tale or Don't Worry, Darling. It's really a roll of the dice. <laughs> um, this week is the last week of the month. So it will be one of our fireside um, live shows that will be released on wherever you can find podcasts. And it is Elizabeth Kyle and I putting Sean Hunter and Dawson Leary on trial on who was the worst nineties protagonist, Sean or Dawson. Last week was me and Katie Foss talking about what it feels like to be healed from your worst relationship. We have merch. It's cute. Look how colorful that is. Merch. Merch. <laughs> and you friends, you know me. I'm your host of Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous, where we analyze pop culture through the lens of race or gender and sometimes both. We are still currently in rebroadcast mode. New season will drop October 11th, 12th. Season oh, four is all is Wednesday. So October 12th and season four is all about wealthy women in the media. And we have guests. These two people in, uh, right now are guests in season four and it's very exciting. So you'll want to make sure that on October 12th, you have subscribed to our channel by then. So that way you can watch or tune into the season. Also tomorrow night, Natalie and I will be on Instagram oh, talking right. about episodes <laughs> Four, five, and six of season two of One Tree Hill, and yeah. what is happening? You have to tune in because I got questions. Oh, I got to listen while I was making Penelope's Crystal Shop house for Halloween. I got to listen to the girls interview Paul Johansson, who played Dan Scott, and what, a, and they cried because he's such a lovely human being. So, like, if he wants to talk to us. <laughs> About I, Dan Scott. I struggle with people who people claim to be lovely human beings, but then play horrible characters on TV. There's a part of it's, you that is a shitty person if you can no, play a shitty person that it well. It is truly my greatest joy when I know that you can play a dirt bag, but you are a teddy bear. Like it is my greatest joy to know that he is a wonderful human being. So, <laughs> so shout out to the Drama Queens podcast. Nice. Um, but yeah, that's a Men I've Tolerated pod on Instagram. And Mario and I even get to be on an episode of Pop Culture Makes Me Jealous together because I elbowed my way into a movie that I like. I was like, hmm, <laughs> make room for me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and like I said, new season starts October 12th. We also have merch as well in the merch store. We have seasonal stuff right now out, as does Natalie. So you want to nab those seasonal items before they go away. I love Halloween. Um, 
Yes. Mario's and... wearing Halloween merch, right? Oh, no. Yes. Scary yeah. movies are scary my movies. vibe. Yeah. That's yep. Um, and so Do you tune want to book club? <laughs> oh yeah. Well, and pop culture makes me jealous as a book club. You should join the book club. And if you're a pal on Patreon, you actually get voting rights and access to the replay. Everyone else, you have to show up live. But that's not the point. We only so re- we read props. books that have been adapted to screen. That is the theme of our book club. Um, and let's see. I think that's it, y'all. The next Still Comfy next week, right next week, yes. is we are capping our Instagram series of the new Prime Original A League of Their Own with the OG A League of Their Own with Gina Davis, mm-hmm. the one and only League of Their Own. That the better in- League of Their Own. informed exactly my identity politics. Um <laughs> That is next week on Natalie's channel. And I think that's everything we got going on in the next two weeks. So be sure to subscribe to Mario's channel on Instagram, our channels, all the things. So you never miss a live show or whatever it is that we're talking about because you know you want it. Friends, until next time, we will see you in the DMs. See you tomorrow night on the River Court and stay cozy, stay comfy. (laughs) 